Hello there and welcome back to another Luminar Neo tutorial. Today I will guide you on how to create a Vertorama photo in Luminar Neo using the Panorama Stitching extension. If you are not familiar with Vertorama photography, we have a tutorials available on our YouTube channel and you can watch them now to learn more. To start, Vertorama is a vertical panorama photo that uses a similar technique to wide panorama. It is perfect for tall structures such as towers, cathedrals, skyscrapers and more. If you are wondering how to capture Vertorama with your own camera, please watch the video available in the corner of the screen. Before we begin, I want to also remind you that you can download the same sample files I will be using in this tutorial and the link is available in the description of this video. Ok, so we are already in Luminar Neo, catalog module and the first thing we are looking at are the sample files. We have the top of the building all the way through until the reflection in the water. In total we have 7 images and we can start. So first come first we need to select them all and we can do that by simply using Command or Control A. Once we have them selected, let's drag and drop them onto the Panorama Stitching extension. Now as always, before we're gonna start the stitching, let's jump into the settings by clicking on a circle with the three dots and here make sure that the distortion correction, the vignette and chromatic aberration reduction is on. All these check buttons, once it's all on, just click away and then click on Start. Now the application will prepare the preview of the panorama and we're gonna continue from there. So just like with all the photography panoramas, the first window we're going to see is the transformation window. This is where we're going to make sure that everything is straight, aligned and it looks as realistic as possible. So the first thing we need to do is to make sure that we choose the best possible projection. To do that we're gonna go to the bottom left corner. We are starting by default with the spherical, so let's just go through the different options and see what works the best. Cylindrical, uh, I think it makes the whole image a little bit too long, too stretched. Next the Mercator, I think it's a little bit better. Let's have a look at the Mercator and also the spherical. Yeah, I still like the spherical a little bit more. After that we have the plane, well, the plane, plane and the spherical, let's have a look at that. There is not much of a difference to be honest, I think the sides maybe look a little bit better. And then finally we have the fish eye. I don't really like the fish eye on this, so let's have a look one more time. We have a look at the plane, uh, I think the sides are a little bit too stretched, so let's go for the spherical. Once we have the projection selected, the next thing we want to do is to rotate the image. So we're gonna use the cross, the cross overlay as a guide. Let's position it in the center of the image. Let's say that we're gonna take the set of the glasses as a guide and now hover outside of the image and rotate it until you're happy with the rotation. Now it's not gonna be perfect right away, however I think something like this is good to start. Now we need to go ahead and start to push it around. To do that we just simply click on the image and then drag it up or down. So let's have a look, I think something like this is looking good. And now we can hold spacebar on our keyboard and move the guide to other parts of the image. So let's say right here when I look at the building actually it looks quite straight as well. If we want we can zoom in a little closer and we can do that with our wheel on the mouse or we can use this little help down here. Now looking at it I think that's all good. So again hold spacebar and let's move on the other side of the image. Looking again at this part of the wall here zooming in. I think that looks straight as well. So I think for the time being this is looking good. Let's just bring it back in. And if we happy with it, I think we can click on continue. Now on the next window, we have the opportunity to crop the image. So let's crop it, let's avoid this part 
And what I would like to do, I would like this part where the reflection start to be kind of in the middle of the frame. So let's crop a little closer right here. Of course, that we can crop it even further later on in the edit module. However, just to start, I think something like this is looking good. Let's make sure that we have same amount of space on the top and on the bottom. Maybe just make sure that you don't cut completed the light. And once we're done, let's just click on crop. On this final window, we have a one more chance to double check the result, but I think everything is looking good. So once we are really done, all we need to do is to click on save. Once the Vertorama is created, it will be saved in the Panorama Stitching folder in a folder section of the catalog module. It's already the one that is selected, so we can just hit spacebar and preview it. It's looking quite good. So while we're doing this, let's jump into our toolbar here on the right side and have a look at the details. So the final image is in TIFF format and looking at the resolution, it's over 8,000 pixels on 10,000 pixels. The size of the image is almost 700 megabytes. So it really has a lot of data and we will be able to do a lot with editing. So that really is what we're going to do next. We're going to edit the image. Of course, that we can jump straight into the edit module. But before we're going to do that, let's go into the presets module where we can check some of our preset collections that come from our essential preset bundle. For example, for this image right here, we can have a look at collection that is called Cityscape Chronicles. Let's open it and wait a moment for the preview to load. Once it's ready, we can just hover over the presets and see what they're going to do to the image. So of course, it gives us different looks. Some of them are better than the other, but of course, they apply to different kinds of images. This one is quite good. It would need a little bit of extra brightness, but that's fine. The street stories is also quite cool, but I really like the urban chic. So I think that's looking great or the city noir. So once you would select preset from here, all you would need to do is to click on it, apply it, then adjust it in the edit module and continue. If you would be interested in getting collection like this together with another 38 collections of presets, make sure that you follow the link in the description of the video, which will bring you to our website, cleverphotographer.com, and you can check out the full list of all these presets as a part of our Luminar Neo Essential Preset Collection. But for now, we're going to continue without the presets. We're going to go into the edit module and do the edit here. Now, just like always, when we're starting the editing, we're going to start in a develop tool here in the essential section. And the first come first, let's go into the optics. In the optics, make sure that the auto difference is on. And now let's take care of the sharpness and noise reduction. To adjust both of them, let's just zoom in to 100%. And you can do that by using Command or Control 1. Or you can also use the shortcut at the bottom of your screen. Now, looking at the image, uh, I don't see any noise. However, it needs a little bit of extra sharpening. So just to make sure, let's go into the noise reduction and add standard 10. And once we're done, we can close it. After that, we're going to move on to the sharpness. Now, I think that for image like this, it's good to use the rule of 100. So take the number 100 minus the amount we have entered in the noise reduction. So that's a 100 minus 10. And the result is 90. So let's add 90 into the sharpening. It's already looking much better. However, right now we are sharpening the entire image. So what we want to do, we want to add some masking. Usually between 60 or 70 is good. So let's add 70. And basically what we're doing, we're just telling the software that we want to sharpen only the areas with the texture, edge and details. So that was the sharpening, noise reduction. We can close both of them and now move into the light and black and whites. Starting with the highlights and shadows, Let's bring the highlights down just a little bit. We want to bring some of the details back from the sky. So let's go somewhere around minus 60. 
After that, moving on to the shadows, we can open them up a little bit. Again, gently here, somewhere around 40, or maybe even just 35. And finally, blacks and whites. Let's hit J on our keyboard to bring on the clipping mask to make sure that if we go overboard with blacks or whites, we will get a warning on the screen. Let me just show example. If I really push the blacks down, we will have this blue overlay telling us that these areas are completely black. And when we go with the whites up, on this one you can't see it. However, if I would do this, you would see the red overlay. And that basically means that these areas are completely overexposed white and they are just burned out. So reset this back with the highlights somewhere around 60 and with other blacks just gently down to let's say minus 20 and with whites let's open it up to somewhere at about 40. Once we're done with this we can close the blacks and whites and add a little bit of contrast so I think somewhere around 50. Maybe we're gonna add a little bit of exposure just very gently 0 0.20 will do and we can close the light section. After that, all there is left to do here is the color tab. So open it up. We can adjust the white balance here. We can add a little bit of coolness or warm it up. But I actually quite like the white balance. With the tint, we can add a little bit of magenta just to remove a little bit of green tint coming from the trees. Finally, saturation and vibrance. What I quite like to do is to take the saturation slider down to somewhere around minus 10 and then add a little bit of vibrance with the vibrance slider. Let's have a look. I think somewhere around maybe a 20 will do. So this is it for the develop tool. We can close it and we can continue. For example, we can jump into the structure AI where we can add some clarity to the image, especially for this cityscape type of image the structure AI works quite well. And when we take the amount slider and bring it up, it will create more of the clarity and details in the image. You want to be careful. You don't want to create HDR image like this. Let's just go gently somewhere around 20. Once we're happy, we close the tool and move on. Next stop are the details. So the details tool. Here, we're gonna go into the small details and medium details, and what we're doing, we're just enhancing the overall sharpness. I quite like to use the first two. With the small details, I generally go between 15 to 20. Once again, if you want, you can zoom in and just double check the amount of details you're adding, but I think the 20 is good. And then the second one, the medium details, a little bit less, maybe just around 50. I think it's looking really well. We're starting to really push the image and get the structure stand out. What we want to do here is to go into the details masking and here make sure that the details masking is again between 60 or 70. Close this, close the details, zoom out, and we're going to continue. There's really nothing else here I would like to add to the image. The final thing we can do, we can go into the enhance AI and use the Accent AI to just add a little bit of overall push to the whole image. Specifically on image like this, it can really help, and I think it makes the whole image stand out. So on the Accent AI, I have added 30, and I think I'm quite happy with that. Now we could go through other tools, and you're more than welcome to play around with it. However, we're just gonna finish it off with nice vignette. Let's open the vignette tool, and bring the amount slider down to add gentle vignette around the whole image. Now you want to add good amount, however, you don't want to overdo it. So let's go to minus 40 and double check the before and after. And after that, there is a little trick. We can open the advanced settings and actually add a little bit of inner light to have the middle stand out a little further and navigate the viewer's eyes to the center of the image. Once we're happy with the vignette, we can close it. And now is a good time to see the before and after. To do that, we can use the eye icon at the bottom of the screen. 
or we can also use the little slider, which is a great way to see the before and after. You can kind of slide around and I think it looks really cool. Of course, that there could be more done, a little bit of dodge and burn or other effects. But for the time being, for the basic natural edit, I think this is looking great. And there you have it. If you want a copy of our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, there is nothing easier than heading to our website cleverphotographer.com slash Luminar Gift. While you're there, you can also check out one of our popular Luminar Neo products, or you can stay here and watch more videos about Luminar Neo. For today, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next video.